Hello and welcome to the very last Lotro 101 class. Unless I decide to do sequels. Uh, so for session 8 today, it is March 30th, the penultimate day of March. <clears throat> and I'm your hostess, your teacher, your person with some of the answers. So guess what? We have no slides today. No actual slides. For real, look at this. <gasps> look, up and down, up and down, no slides. So, um, we're gonna do away with slides. We're gonna go straight to the game. I'm gonna hit the shiny button. We're gonna have our usual stream visitor in the form of a kitty cat who was sleeping until like two seconds ago. Then he decided, oh hey, she's awake. All right, so what have we got here, ladies and germs? Ladies and gentlemen, let me go pull up my file. Uh, Ermintrude has already found me. Uh, if you're part of this session, um, you were one of the players with me last time, uh, feel free to log into your characters now. We can get you uh, into the fellowship that we're running right now. <clears throat> Hi. So we're looking for Cinnamon and Eelwine to join us. Hello. <clears throat> yes, Tomas, if you'd be so kind as to log your character in, I will get you added to our fellowship. You should be right here. Uh, also, let me get this out of the way. Everybody's having to load in. That's fine. I was expecting it. Now, for today's session, uh, the plan is that the four of us will finish our... Hopefully, we'll finish the starting introduction. And at the end of it, I will switch over to my regular account uh, and into my officer character, Kiriana, the, the high-level minstrel, and I will invite you to the Mythgard kinship if you so desire. Uh, if you don't want to join Mythgard, that's perfectly fine. There's a ton of other awesome kinships out there. Um, <clears throat> so you can continue your journey in Middle-earth with the friends of your choice. Okay, I see Eelwene. Hey, 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 get back here. Get back here, where are you going? Eelwene, get back here. <laughs> I'll send you the invitation. There we go. Just waiting on Dragon Rider Cinnamon. And my kitty's like, oh, I'm comfortable now. There you are. He's happy. He's such a happy kitty. Then what's going to happen at the end is I can't invite myself to my kinship. Uh, and I don't have like a second officer alt that I can log in with. So, I have actually decided to, after this class is over, I'm going to repurpose Safranetta uh, and make her a minstrel. And uh, with the gracious consent of my friends, uh, she may actually join uh, the kinship of the Lonely Mountain Band. So, we are waiting... Are, am I going to teach you to use all the fellowship conversation tools? Yes, we can do that. That's actually part of what we're going to do. But I do also want to get us through the questing today. <clears throat> because you can't invite somebody to a kinship unless they're through the introduction. And we can't run too far afield. Wait, today's not the first or the third. She first did. No, I think we'll actually be good. Today we can run over time simply because there isn't anybody on after us. Dragon Rider was watching the Duero Scholar. That is a worthy thing to do. The Duero Scholar is an awesome Lotro streamer, and he's actually streaming something else right now, I think. But he is also one of the uh, foregone leaders in the translation of the Secret Dwarven Tongue Kuzduel. Uh, in fact, 
Standing Stone Games reached out to him, or he reached out to him. I'm not sure how it all happened. But he actually consulted uh, with Standing Stone and provided information to them for the purposes of a recent uh, com, uh, content update, the one in the Iron Hills. And there's actually a character, if you play enough of the game and you get that far along into the content, he actually, they had granted him an NPC named after him called Roy, because that's his real name. Um, and that's not a secret. I see a cinnamon. All right, let's get cinnamon in the party. Cinnamon. All right, fellowship invite. Shoom. All right. So the tooltip right now is the login reward. It's actually talking about the one down here. I'm going to move the chat window a little bit so it doesn't override that. So down here in the lower left-hand corner, you see these little icons. All right. And the little icons, it says there's pending alerts, which means I was awarded a title. And the title is I am Safranetta of the Fallow Hides because every, you can collect like a ton of titles. Uh, my good friend Pontin Finberry, who is the leader of the second uh, breakfast kinship over on the Crick Hollow server, an all-around good egg uh, in the Lotro community, uh, he has more titles than anybody's allowed to have. Like he, he collects titles. And he was actually the very first person who wasn't myself or a Standing Stone dev. I was the guinea pig, so it doesn't technically count for me who earned the Performer of Note title, which is uh, a new one that Standing Stone came up with uh, last year to hand out to people. Uh, so we're on our title screen. We're going to do a quick uh, review of the titles. You can show your rank. Like, if you PVMP on the Freep side, on the good guy side, you earn a rank, and you can display that rank like Sergeant, um, Captain, or whatever. Um, you can also, once your character hits level 15 and you're allowed to have a surname, you can elect to show the surname. My, our characters are too low level, we don't have them yet, but you can do that later on. But right now, the only title this character has earned is the one of her heritage. All characters will earn a title of where they're from. Uh, so, example, if you unlock Stout X Dwarves and you played one of those, you could say you are so-and-so of Mordor. It's so weird. Uh, and they also have this little tool tip and you can hover over the title itself and it will read the whole, the whole, it's called flavor text. It's basically, when you see one of those little tool tips and it's got some text, it doesn't really tell you what it does. It's just some little additional, um, information there. It's really cool. All right. And you can, you know, once you start collecting titles, you'll get more than, you know, and they, they're sorted by, um, you know, you know, by grouping, there's categories of titles, and you can sort them however you like, um, and there's the thing. But anyway, I'm going to make my other uh, thing go away called uh, Open. So I did my Hobbit present for today, and I got <coughs> Virtue XP, which I can't use yet because I'm not level 7, and I've got a Battle Potion of Restoration. And... It says it removes up to three disease, wound, fear, poison effects from the target. Now, the removal of diseases, stun, uh, stuns, fears, poison, all these things are generally called cleanses. And they're very useful in a lot of gameplay. Lotro actually... Some other video games, they have these, but they don't really make it so you win or lose. In Lotro, it's very important to keep an eye on those things. And to make sure you do something that gets rid of them at the appropriate time. <clears throat> Eventually, most classes will get a skill that will allow you to, you know, cleanse that stuff off of you or somebody else. Um, hunters generally have the best ones. But in general terms, um, you just want to keep an eye on those debuffs against you and make sure that you don't let them unnecessarily hurt you. So the tooltip, uh, the, I'm sorry, the tutorial for this is about consumables. Consumables are basically like foods, um, these potions, things that can help, you know, help boost you or debuff you or debuff a bad thing from you. So, all right. And the login reward, we're cleaning those out, cleaning this out. So we are now ready to begin. But since we're all here and Tomas was very interested in discussing how do you communicate as a fellowship, 
Uh, by default, all fellowships will automatically be joined to a fellowship chat room. If you look in your chat window, I'm going to bring mine up here. All right? Is, let me move it a little bit out of the way. You'll see the text in green. We can use the chat in game to discuss some things. Uh, if you need to say, oh, hey, follow me over here, or, you know, we're going to go head this way, you know, this is what you can do if, if you're not actually talking to each other on voice chat. Now, I don't have voice chat turned on because I didn't want to assume that everybody had a microphone ready to go, but that's something you and your your fellows can work on, especially if you're working within a kinship group that, you know, generally your community can help you out with a lot of that stuff here. Generally never... Um, never going to be alone in that. So by default, you can you know, type at each other in fellowship chat. So you just type slash F. It'll change your output to the green fellowship. Now, here's the thing. If you don't like green for your fellowship text, you can always change that. Um, you go into your options. You go to your chat. You go down here. And not only can you change what color it is, like let's say I wanted to make it blue. Nobody can read that, or I want to make it bright yellow. You can also make it really big. So let's say I wanted to make it really big. So you notice the event broadcast, you'll see that going off. That's actually from Standing Stone. And so you can make your fellowship chat as big as their window. Like, let's say it's 20 pixels tall. And I'm going to put it back to green. I want to put it back to green, but I want to make it 20 pixels tall so that when you see it on the screen, uh, you'll see it in bigger text. So, for example, let me click accept first. See how big that showed up? Let me move this up a little bit. Let's put this right under here, in fact. You see how much bigger that appeared before, you know, the, the, the previous one where it when he asked, well, do we use this chat? So yeah, getting a microphone, actually Tomas, here's a really cool thing, uh, is if you ever show up to court of the rings, which is Fridays from noon to one, um, you can drop a question into chat and normally I don't volunteer people for stuff, but I know this generally does work. If you go into chat and you ask in Twitch chat during that hour, hey folks, what's a good microphone to use for, you know, talking to folks in, um, in Discord or uh, on voice chat? Our community manager, Cordovan, is an audio nerd. I, I like to refer, like, if you get him sidetracked about talking about record players, turntables, audio equipment, microphones, and whatever... Um, I like to call it Audio Nerdica, and once upon a time, I made a bingo card for Court of the Rings, and it has a, it has a square. So I'm just saying. <clears throat> so that's one thing you can do with Fellowship Chat. Um, there are other things you can do in terms of being in a fellowship. If you right-click on your character portrait up here in the corner, you right-click on it. You can also right-click on other people in the fellowship. Now, I, as the fellowship leader, can actually do things, uh, like I can kick somebody out of the fellowship. I'm not going to, but I could. Um, we have these things called target markings. And this is basically where you can tag things with icons to say, hey, hit this guy first, or, you know, this person is the leader. Uh, in fact, a long time ago, uh, like five or six years ago, Locho first started getting into streaming, the actual company, you know, Standing Stone, the company, back when it was still Turbine. Can you step out yourselves too? I'm not sure what you're referring to there, uh, Tomas. Can you please clarify? Uh, Dragon Rider has a headset from your last call center job. Good deal. I'm using a headset. Um, I like these. I don't honestly recommend them because they're shorting out right now and they're driving me bananas. But they've been good for what they are. are. Uh, it has a built-in microphone, but I actually have a podcasting microphone that I bought many years ago. Um, if you want to leave a fellowship, yeah, you can 
you can leave a fellowship at any time. For example, if you right click, um, for example, if you notice, if I right click on my name and I pull up the fellowship thing and I draw my mouse over to, so I'm playing with this menu, um, I can set targets on people, markers. Uh, I can add somebody as an assistant to me so they can do a lot of the same things. I could do something called a ready check, which basically asks everybody, hey, are you ready to move on? Uh, generally, uh, the leader will do this at a time when they're about ready to call pull the boss. So it's like, okay, we, we've got all of our buffs done. We're ready to go. And just everybody indicates that, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Um, we can do some, I can do something called convert to raid. If we wanted to add more than the initial six people were allowed, you can convert to raid at any time. Doesn't mean need a minimum fellowship size beyond two. Um, and that's where you can add more than six people. Um, beyond that, it'll say, you know, you're in a fellowship and you can't add more people. Uh, I can disband the fellowship. I'm the only one who can disband it because I'm the leader. Uh, and I can then leave the fellowship and then that would automatically designate one of you as the leader. And then you suddenly get all these commands. I can also decide what the loot rule is going to be. Uh, by default, I prefer, as we discussed last time, the round robin with roll pass. Because I personally find way too much drama in anything involving need, greed, or pass, or master looter. <clears throat> loot quality. Um, this is something you can set to determine as the leader what will actually trigger the loot, ro the loot rolling system. Um, if, for example, there's none, basically every single piece of thing that's going to come out is going to demand that you roll for it. Or sometimes we'll, some folks will set it because we get so much uncommon gear. Why don't we do it where um, it's only rare or higher or incomparable or higher, which is the scion. So does it have to be purple or scion or gold before the rolling kicks in? Um, and the other uh, loot rule is free for all. I hate free for all. <clears throat> uh, it's, yeah, basically it's all over the place. So... Are there any questions about fellowships and about the basics of being in a fellowship and also, you know, how to maneuver through those menus? Tomas has got, answer, I answered your question, good deal. Uh, so sometimes you get pulled into one but need to do a solo quest. Oh no, we lost Tomas, he logged out. I'm going to wait to see if he says something in chat. You're here? Well, your character logged out. And you'll notice that. Um, and also, if somebody gets defeated in combat, you'll also be able to see, you know, their character name. It'll say defeated in red in there. And then you'll have to go find them and have somebody resurrect it. So let's see if we can get him back in game. Can I? I don't actually need to invite you back. Uh, you just need to log back in. Um, you're still in our in our group. Because the game does recognize that the internet is a persnickety thing sometimes. Uh, and it gives some period of time until it kicks somebody out of your group because they logged out. Uh, I've actually had a case where I was in a fellowship uh, with Cordovan once uh, when I used to run on his uh, on a show, Court of the Rings. And I'd log into my character the next day and we were still fellowed up because even though he was logged out, it never discontinued our fellowship. It was very strange. And we'll also discuss uh, the other blue icon you see in the corner while we're waiting on Tomas is this one. And sometimes your game crashes for no reason that you can see. Yeah, that unfortunately does happen. 
Uh, it's less of a thing now with the 64-bit uh, client than it was with the 32-bit client, simply because uh, crash to desktop was a fairly common occurrence with the 62-bit because of the memory issues. So this blue icon where it looks like a stack of little pieces of paper or layers, this basically says there are multiple copies of Archit running around here. Uh, it's not like the Mirror Universe where suddenly everybody has a goatee. Uh, it's more of a case where the game thinks there's too many people around. There aren't. Actually, there might be. Let's see how many people are actually on um, right now. 622 non-anonymous people on Langeball right this second, which is pretty good. Uh, last night, uh, I was checking on Evernight, and they had 1,600 people, and it was like, oh, that's so cool. So, what this little icon is helpful for is you can actually join a fellowship but can't see anybody because you're in the wrong layer. So, Aelwine, we can't see you yet. So either you're still logging in or how can you check that? Well, there you are. You just basically your character just loaded in. So let's say you had loaded in and we weren't around that you only saw the trainers. They're like, well, where, where's my group, right? What you would do is you would click this blue icon down here and you would have the option to transfer to the layer that your fellowship leader was in. In fact, this is something that happens a lot when there are big events such as Weatherstock coming up in July. Uh, there'll be a couple of people who are designated as, um, you know, as transport assistants. And what their job is, is to deliberately invite more people to the lair who are supposed to be there because that's how Weatherstock happens. Is That's why it's also a very, very big deal. So... In general terms, the game will spawn a new layer if there's more than 50 people in a certain place. In some cases, there will always be additional layers, like the lore hall is frequently layered. It's called layering. So if you're in a fellowship and you, you know that you're standing in the same place that everybody else is, you see their dots but you can't see the players, you've loaded in, everything's good, then... You take a look at that little icon, and it will send you to the layer the fellow leader is in, and then you can all play together. So. The shadow member of our fellowship here is being silly. So, let's actually get to our questing so we can move along and see what is actually going on in here in Archit. Uh, I always have a bit of a fondness for Archit, I have to say. Um, for a couple of, the main reason is, um, last year, was it last year, early last year or late the previous year, a developer by the name of Matt Elliott, uh, who goes by the forum handle of Scenario, he actually revamped Archit. Uh, he did a whole lot of revamping of older areas to kind of spruce them up a bit. Back in the day, um, if you see over, you know, over the stockade this way, I'm going to have my character point. Right? That all used to be like this high, impassable cliffs. Like, you couldn't get out of arch it. Like, all these cliffs that we can see around us, well, they look more like the cliffs behind me over here. It looked more like that. But you couldn't get out. Right? So, it was deliberately aimed to funneling you out these gates and then eventually out into Coom and the rest of the wide world. And the whole point was, they wanted to make it clear to players that you, you're not supposed to go out of those bounds until you're done with your starting instance. And so what happened was, he redesigned it. He made it look pretty. Um, it looks really cool now. I really like it. And the fact is, once you're, we're done with our starting instance, and Ilwene will actually reappear here in Archit, we'll, 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 we hobbits will wind up in Little Delving, over in the Shire, but regular players can now more easily get into Archit and get out of Archit without simply going down the funnel, right? Um, so they can just ride up into the hills. We can't get there. There are 
what's called invisible fences or collision plates preventing us from getting out. Um, but they're generally covered by wood or rocks or bushes to make it clear that there's an obstacle without it being ugly. Like this, you know, this plain rock or whatever. It looks more natural, quite frankly. Um, the reason why I'm fond of it is when he redesigned it and they put it up on the test server, I found holes in the invisible fences. I created a level one burglar and went around the entire area just testing for holes. And I did this as a courtesy and I was like, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to try to find all these coordinates. And I went and found the coordinates of all the places where you could get out. And then I went just for giggles. And I did this on stream, actually, I, I, on, on my channel. Is I went and took this character as far as I could go as a level one. And I wound up in the troll shaws before uh, she died because I was did something dumb. But it was fun. In fact, I went and you know got all the locations, all the instances of like, okay, scenario, I found all these spots, go fix them. And he fixed them. And now you don't think you can get out. Okay. But let's go talk to Strider because Strider is waiting on. He says he's got his little flaming gold icon. So follow me. We're going to go talk to Mr. Strider. All right. We got Cinnamon. AL Winnie is coming on over. And here's Ermintrude. <gasps> Cinnamon has leveled up again. Excellent. Now, it is very possible that uh, if you're currently playing on a VIP account, you'll level up more quickly than the rest of us because you have that rested uh, XP that you get every day that I'm not getting because I'm not a VIP. Ermintrude has also leveled up. Excellent. Good job. Okay, so remember, we all learned part of, you know, our first early skills. Now, they don't have uh, bulb barbed wire in those locations. You'll just see, like, fences, um, rocks, um, bushes are mainly the big ones. So you'll see a bush that you can't pass through it. And then once you complete the starting instance and go into the regular version of Archit, um, then you'll be able to pass through those fences. There's no fences there. It's really cool. It's really beautiful, too. Yay! Everybody's leveled up except me. Let's see if I can level up. All right. We ready to begin? I'll finish my quest. Yay! I leveled up too. We're on level three. Okay. Now, the tooltip for the tutorial is talking about the Lotro store. We've already talked about it. It's where you throw money at to get conveniences and cosmetics and all the other fun stuff. All right. You don't have to play with the Lotro store. I spent too much money in it last night because double Lotro bonus points. All right. So Omdir, the shadows crept over him. Remember, he got stabbed by one of the Nazgul. And we don't yet know how serious that's going to be, but Omdir is clearly ailing. I'm going to warn you right now. You'll meet all kinds of members of the Grey Company and their fate is not awesome. All right. Omdir needs medicine. Do you know of the plant called King's Foil? Aragorn knows King's Foil, right? So we should talk to Captain Brackenbrook and see if there's any growing around. Okay. Now, you see the rewards that we are being offered here. Now, these are important. The green potions are ones, uh, they're generally called ethylos essences of various, or infusions or whatever. They will heal your morale, the green stuff right here. The blue ones are Celebrant, and they will heal the power. Um, as you level up, you will get bigger and bigger and better and better potions. They're never going to be as good as you want them to be. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, sometimes you will have to pick and choose. Do you want the green ones or the blue ones? And you, know, you have to decide which are better for you. Um, for the most part, most people are going to want to take the green ones. Now, classes that use a lot of power, like hunters or minstrels or runekeepers, might think about the blue. Uh, Bjornings should never take the blue, because they don't even have power as a thing. They have wrath instead. So, let's move on. Let's accept our next quest. So, Aramidi of the Old Kings. Captain Brackenbrook will ask him for directions to try to earn his favor. Okay, good. So, let's go talk to the captain. 
with the fantabulous mustache over here. He looks like he belongs in the 1910s or something. Like, he's he's so super Edwardian going on here. Or maybe like the 1890s, late Victorian. Okay, it's a leafy plant that grows around Bronway's Folly, a ruin south of here. Help yourself as much as you'd like. We have no use for it because you are a fool. And some of us, as we're reading our quest text, like to talk back to the NPCs. We like to sass them a bit. In fact, our good and dear uh, leader, Professor Corey, loves to give a ranger we'll meet eventually called Candaith, Candaith a lot of sass about his lack of knowledge of black speech. Okay. So the captain has seen the wisdom of taking us up on our offer of help. Excellent. Uh, go talk to his best man, Calder Cobb, is having trouble with wolves. Okay. And perhaps you can help him on your way to do your gardening job for the ranger. Because, of course, Captain Brackenbrook doesn't trust rangers. So let's continue our quest. We are supposed to complete a quest for Calder Cobb and gather King's Foil Leaves. Okay. So, he said it was south of here. So, one of the things about this game is... It doesn't move... Some games will actually move the minimap. It will keep you stationary. Like, your dot won't be an arrow pointing a direction. You'll just be a dot in the center. And then you rotate. As you change directions, the map rotates with you. Personally, I find that drives me bananas. So, let's head to the south. And directions are the same as in real life. North, south, east, and west. And also, you'll notice a couple of icons on here. This is our quest tracker. This tells us which quest uh, we have decided to focus on. And this one, this orange one, you'll see one, maybe one, maybe two, maybe a whole bunch of these. And these will be icons pointing you to towns. And it'll tell you how far in meters that thing is away. So here's Calder Cobb down here. And you see somebody else who's got a name. His name is Dirk Mudbrick. Very nice fellow. Um, I actually knew a guy, interviewed... Uh, an operations manager for uh, a company called Carbine uh, who looked very much like that character model. Anyway, Calder Cobb, he's wearing a nice outfit of, you know, chain mail, leather jerkin, you know, he's got a he's got a spear in hand, so he looks pretty trustworthy, I guess. Well, well, if it isn't the rumor monger. Except his attitude kind of stinks, right? Okay, so there's no brigands causing trouble, he, according to him. His problem seems to be the wolves down at Bronway's Folly. And Brackenbrook sent you to assist, and of course, we get told to deal with the wolves. Because of course he has sheep here that I'm sure he's really upset about guarding. He does, he's, he's a soldier, he's not a shepherd, right? This is demeaning for him, but yet they have to guard the sheep. But it's kind of no wonder, I mean, their fencing isn't all that awesome. I mean, look at that. No wonder the sheep are wandering around. So, it says, let's go find the wolves. Now, one thing you can do is if you right-click on the icon next to this other quest, we can set this one as our quest guide focus. So, we're supposed to defeat the wolves near Bronway's Folly. And, of course, the Bronway's Folly is this ruin up here. All right, so one thing we want to take a look at is monsters and mobs. So we're going to click on this growling dusk wolf. And one thing I want to point you to is the fact that where we have green for our morale, theirs is yellow. And what this means is right now this dusk wolf is not aggressive. It's not going to attack us. Now, there are going to be mobs that we're going to get to later on here in our session that you, you click on them and that will be red. That means that is an aggressive mob. They will attack you if you get too close or they notice you, right? If you get too close. Like, if you're a burglar like me and you're in stealth and you get too close to a mob, they will spot you. So, at this point, this Dusk Wolf will walk right up to us and is not going to harm us. However, um, Aelwene, you are our guardian. Generally, it's going to be your role in a party to be the person to start the fight. So it's your job to protect us, but it's also your job to pull the mob. So I'd like you to run up to that uh, Dusk Wolf and attack it. Go get it! 
And then we're going to run in behind you. Now, I, as a burglar, will sneaky sneaky. And as a burglar, I can get in close and I can do more damage if I'm in stealth when I attack. Okay, we've attacked it. All right, good job. Cinema is also stealthy. So, got the pending loot thing. Now, the pending loot icon down here, this is going to be important. You want to keep an eye on this. Now, the reason I should not have pending loot, actually, um, it'll show up in this window. Like, it'll be this little, uh, this little icon down here. Now, if you notice, the background of the icon is blue. That means you've got plenty of time to deal with things. As certain items start counting down, you notice it's got a timer on it. After an hour, items start going away. And what will happen is that icon will turn from blue to orange to red. And then when it's red, things are getting deleted. And so you want to check this and either loot it or not, as, you, as the case may be. I think the reason it uh, gave me that icon is because I had loot on, or, uh, let's see. Yeah, I had always loot all turned off, so I'm going to turn my loot thing back on so that doesn't annoy us. All right, so we've got our stuff. Let's continue on to Bronway's Folly. And it's like, well, if you're not sure where something is, look at the map. All right. And so this is the map of our starting instance of Archit. Um, so you notice Bronway's Folly is down here. You see the Blackwold's Roost is over here. There's a hunting lodge. We'll find out about that soon enough. Um, and then there's Sprigley's Farm, and there's some foresty stuff up there. So we're going to go to Bronway's Folly, because that's where we were told to go. So come on, Cinnamon. One thing uh, you will notice, as a burglar or anything in stealth, you run a lot slower. So for example... I'm a lot more sneaky. But then as soon as I come out of stealth, I run back. Because you're basically trying to hide and sneak. So in any game that has like a... This is a rogue skill or a rogue-like character. Um, generally, if you're in your stealth mode, you, you walk slow, more slowly. And that's just uh, a gameplay thing. So we've got some wolves here. We're supposed to kill four of them. We've already got one. There's also King's Foil Plant. So sometimes what can happen is one person can loot something. And this says, I've got a quest item. Sometimes you'll acquire something that's a quest item. <clears throat> now, sometimes what can happen is one person completes one specific thing of a quest, like kills one of the mobs. You'll get credit for it if you're in close enough range. Just one of us needs to get it. Yeah, and that's a lot of cases. One person clicks on it. So everybody else in our group, Cinnamon, Aylwine, and Aylwine, and Ermintrude, do you also have one King's Foil plant gathered in your intro remedy of the old kings? If not, you'll need to see. Like, you guys are looting this King's Foil plant, but it's not increasing my number of plants discovered. So, let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> All right. So now we get to kill... I'm going to just up and attack this thing. Now, even if you're not the quote-unquote tank character, you can still attack things, but it's generally not recommended. All right, everybody has to come over here for the King's Foil. Now, some quests that say, you know, pick four flowers, it may only provide four for everybody to pick. Some quests will say pick four flowers, and there's like 20 different options of, you know, flowers for you to find. But once you get your first four, you're good. Okay, so we need two more wolves, and it said we were supposed to look at stuff, search atop Bronway's Folly. So a lot of times... If you want to take a look at the words in the quest, they'll give you direction, you know, give you hints as to where you should go. So the top here is going to climb up and up and up. Up, up, up you go. 
And uh, I have a very bad Gollum impression. Unlike my good friend Yiki, who is a an awesome streamer. Who likes to play a spider in the Etnmores as a PvP character. So I'd like uh, somebody else. Let's attack the Dusk Wolf. I'm not going to attack the Dusk Wolf this time. But if you notice, I still got XP for it, even though I didn't attack it at all. And it also counted for the, th the four that I'm supposed to kill. So we need one more wolf and one more king's foil. So I will get my king's foil. And sometimes with these items, what can happen is, like, you can loot one and then the item will vanish. Like, somebody else can't loot that same one. They have to go find one of their own. <clears throat> So I've got all my king's foil, and because you folks killed that uh, wolf, we got all four wolves that we needed. So let's go on up to the top here. We're going to ignore this wolf down here and this wolf down here, because they're not going to attack us. Unless you really want to just kill them for the sake of killing them, um, you can just let them alone. And we come up here. Now before we do anything, don't click on the banner. Um, one thing you're going to notice is there is actually a wolf up here. Sometimes what you might want to do is to go and kill any nearby bad guys so that they don't attack you when the main, the main event shows up. So we're going to go get this wolf out of our way because what will happen in a lot of cases is, there we go, we got him out of the way, is if we come up here. And we start the main event by right-clicking on this clicky. You notice the flag here is actually glowing a little bit. See how it's waving in and out? That's one of the ways the game tells you that this is something you can use. That You can right-click. It has the little hand icon. Um, <clears throat> so do not leave the platform. Sometimes the quest text, let me see if I can show that to you better, will sh give you an instruction like so-and-so can't die or don't leave the platform because what will happen is if you do, you'll fail the quest and then you have to start over. <coughs> so let's go ahead and I'm going to click on the thing. And the wolf master approaches and huh, Calder Cobb told me he'd show up. Why do you go for the minstrel? I don't know. And you notice... This guy is changing who he's attacking. Hey, goofy old lady. How are you, my old friend? Um, and that is where the bad guy shifted who he was aggro to. So it started off that Ermintrude had the most aggro for some reason. And then when Cinnamon attacked, she picked up the aggro from Ermintrude. Now, any character in the Fellowship, no matter what their role is, can draw aggro from the bad guy. Um, that's one of the reasons why tank characters like guardians and whatnot have to make sure they keep taunting. It's a thing called taunting the bad guy to make sure the bad guy doesn't change, you know, and starts attacking everybody else. Um, so that's one of the jobs that a tank has to do is pay attention to is like, okay, is this, is this bad guy beaten up on my healers? Because if the healers die, then the tank's going to die. Because they're, the healers aren't there to keep them alive. So it's kind of a symbiosis what everybody does in a group. So we've got one potential healer, one potential tank, and two uh, DPS characters. Thing is, a guardian can also be just a DPS character. But typically if you're a guardian, especially if you're doing a, a sword and shield, people are going to assume you're there to tank. Uh, and if you're a menstrual, people are pretty much going to assume that you're there to heal if there aren't any other obvious healers. So, we've completed our quest here. We've defeated the Wolf Master. We've picked up, you know, we've picked up the King's Foil. We've killed some wolves. Now we need to go back to Calder Cobb to find out what's going on. Aren't you supposed to be trusted? Why did you send us off to be killed? So, let's go back down the hill. Back down the thing. Now, you can jump off of this and it won't kill you, but you will uh, achieve something known as the broken ankle. And I'll show you what that means. Oh, pff, apparently not. All right, let's try it down here. Whee! You'll hear that crunch. And then your character will walk with this limp for a little while. Now, the thing is you don't want to just jump off of everything. While there isn't damage, 
for jumping off of things. There is a case where the the further you fall, the longer your crunch time will be, where you, you will be injured and walk very slowly. Also, if you fall far enough, your character will be defeated. All right, Calder Cobb, he's a rotter. So we're going to ask him, what's up, buddy? What's that all about? Inconceivable! You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Uh, I would kill you myself if that fool Dirk Mudbrick weren't watching. <gasps> da -da. I do not fear exposure. Brackenbrick will never believe you. I've served loyally since I was but a lad, the old fool. Tell Brackenbrick whatever you like. So he apparently is very... He's very egotistical and very sure of himself. So... Basically, if you do not make ourselves ourselves scarce before tonight, so something's going to happen tonight. Oh no, we better do something about it. So let's, uh, we completed our one quest. Now, it says we have the other one yet to go. So we have to go talk to Strider about the King's Foil. Because, of course, we still have to deal with the whole thing of Omdir, uh, unusually ailing. So let's go back into Archid itself. like a mama duck and I've got ducklings. So, Jocelle the Wary is a hunter here, and Jocelle just set down some fireworks, so thank you. See? Fireworks. We have fireworks in the game. It's really cool. Alright. So, we're gonna go back into Archant. So, you notice how you can see out into the debris fields around us? You didn't used to be able to do that. It was all, it was all more like this, only higher. So, I like the revamps to Archant. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back in the gate. And you notice the guards here, by the way, you notice how they were, you know, their names are red. As you level up, their names will change color because right now, uh, this is a level 10 guard. So once we hit level 5, their names are going to start changing into the regular color schemes of every, you know, all the other mobs and whatnot in the game. All right, so we're going back to Strider. All right. Calder Cobb, traitor. <gasps> Tainter has found you earlier than I predicted. Well, your predictions will eventually get better, but it'll take you some time. All right, so he's going to make a salve for Omdir. And we suddenly get these two things in our inventory where you can use it any time. Calder Cobb, treachery. Armatrude leveled again. Sweet. All right. Cat aside was more dangerous. Uh, the treachery or the ignorance? Okay. If Calder Cobb was his best soldier, I know Brackenbrook will not believe that he tried to have you ambushed by a black old. Come here. Black olds and black cats. What do you expect? <clears throat> All right. There's a brigand in the stocks across the lane from here. He's he being held for highway robbery. You should question him about Calder Cobb. Okay. We're going to accept the quest. And you'll see the little quest ring behind us on the icon. Or the little quest ring behind us. So he's over here. You notice the Arch at Jail has a sign here. It's really cool. All right. Right here, by the way, I'm going to show you something really cool. Uh, if you ever... Yeah, Bookworm, this is a completely brand new account. This is actually one of my uh, band accounts. So here's something really cool: is if you ever want to participate in the uh, on the Bull Roar test server, right? Uh, they created a place where people can instant level their characters, get you know infinite gold or whatever, set everything up so they can test stuff at a higher level or to copy one of the regular characters over. They create something called the Eyes and Guard In. Isengard, you know. And what will happen is on that test server, right next to this door, will be another door right here that you can open up and go into this Isengard tavern. Um, and that will let you, you know, modify or, you know, make a test character or, you know, boost your character without paying real money or anything like that um, if you ever wanted to do that. And 
you can basically fine tune it however you like. You can use the vendors in there, which are all named after current and former game devs, um, to say, let's say you wanted to test content in Rohan, you wanted a, a character that was like level 80 or something, or level 85, then you can boost up to that level or whatever. So that door only appears on the test server, and this is one of the two places it appears right next to this door. It's like an invisible door. So just so you know, that's one of the two places you can get into the Isengard Tavern. The other place is outside next near the Stable Masters in Thorin's Gate. All right. So Jailer Ned Pruner, uh, his wife, remember, uh, Kate Pruner, did not believe us that things were going sideways. So we've got a guy in the stocks. His name is Otto the Brigand. And let's see what Jailer Ned... It used to be you'd go actually into the jail, but they changed things up and put him out here. Whoa, hello. Instant Otto Brigand butt. Okay, you know, called a cop's treachery. Oh, now he's getting bold. Don't be too smug. It's too late. Everybody's gonna, everything bad's gonna happen. War, the Gears of War turning down in the south. And quick, soon I'll be free. You'll be the one in shackles or worse. So let's talk it to the jailer to see what we've got here. Greetings. All righty. Crushing Otto, does it mean his mutterings have been truthful? So Ned disagrees with his wife, which means there's going to be a marital strife at home. Um, all the signs are showing that the Black Wolves mean to attack us. How is it they have the means? Brackenbrook doesn't believe you. You may tell him that I do for what it's worth. Okay. So Ned believes us that something's going to go down. So let's go back to Brackenbrook and say, dude, um... Your boy here, Ned, thinks something's going to happen. How can you say this? Calder Cobb has been loyal to me since he was a boy. Has he, though? Uh, and you notice... I get some shoes. And I also level up. Okay. Remember, when you get new equipment, equip it. Don't forget to equip your new stuff. And you notice, as we keep leveling up, the amount of power and the amount of morale that we have will increase automatically. And gear that you add will, you know, depending on if it has uh, morale or vitality on it, will add to those numbers as well. So we have new skills available. Every level you may, you may, it's not every level, but you may be granted new skills and passive abilities. And as you gain levels, they get better. So with mine... As a burglar, you'll notice that I have three of these with color on them. And this one, the new one, you'll see a little icon, this little um, red icon in the lower right-hand corner. It's like, you know, it's like a, a prize. It's like, hey, you got this red stick. This means it's new. That's all it means. However, you notice it's grayed out. Because if you hover over it, the icon shows this really vividly colored double-edged strike icon. You know, the two, two arrows are in with the bleeds on it. Uh, what this does is this basically requires you to have a critical hit first before this becomes available to you. And you'll hear a sound, a little sound in the background. Um, and when you hear that, then you'll know that you've made a critical hit and that you can then use any skill that requires a critical hit before you can use it. Guardians will have a lot of these, actually. Some of your uh, best skills require like you to have a certain response first. You have to use one skill first and then another one opens up for you to use. So just keep an eye on the tool tips of your skills and they will generally tell you when you can and can't use them. So right now I can use any of these three on a bad guy and then if I crit then I can use the, th the fourth one. All right, And you can again rearrange your skills however it makes sense for you. Um, for example, for me, I go like 1 to 6 are my most important ones, and then 7 to 11 uh, are my second most important ones. However, some people don't have a special keyboard like I do that has a left-handed keypad. They may prefer to use, like, I know Cordovan was talking about what he likes to do. He likes to have his, you know, his fingers on 4, 5, and 6, and then he'll use control 
four, control five, control you know six to you know do the the next row up and then the alt and whatever. That's how he plays. He also plays like a fool, but that's another story. <clears throat> I like to tease that poor boy. Anyway, so so does Ned speak true? Hmm, yeah. I'll not question Calder Cobb lifetime of loyalty if there's no truth to back it up. But if you and Ned are right about your suspicion, this will be very bad. Cal Sprigley is to the south of here, near the gate to the town of Coombe. If odd is going on, he'll know. So we remember, let's pull up our map. Cal Sprigley's farm is way down here, and if you highlight the icon, we have a little glowing ring telling us it's all down there. Now, if you notice, we also have a scroll here on the screen, and this ties into the quest log. So let me pull up my quest log. There we go. Quest log tooltip. Now, you can take a look at a quest. If you're in a fellowship, you'll see icons right here. And basically, this means we're all on the same stage of the quest. Sometimes that icon will have an X on it. And if you hover over to say that character is not eligible for that quest, either because um, it's a class quest and they're a different class, or it could be a quest they've already done, uh, or it'll be... Uh, a gray ring which means they're just not on the correct stage to be able to take the quest like they might be a few steps behind you so we need to go talk to mr sprigley so he's to the south so you notice we have our little icon however our friends mundo and uh Selendine have icons for us too they have quest rings so they have stuff for us to do so let's go talk to them now, this is what's called a side quest. You don't have to do this quest to complete the introduction. The only reason why you might want to do this is you get your first food of the game without buying it. And it adds a little bit of flavor to what we're actually doing. So, Celandine thinks uh, the King's Foil would help, but you know what? I, she has a better idea of how to cure a stricken ranger. So, Billberry Tea. So, we need to go pick her some Billberries. And again, you don't have to do the quest if you don't want to. Uh, it is not required to complete this. And the one way you'll notice wh know whether something is a side quest or a main quest is it won't say intro, prologue, forward, or have a book or chapter, right? <clears throat> All righty. It'll just have... You there. I'm hungry. He's very hungry, apparently. All right. So when's the last time they fed you? I haven't had a bite since breakfast, and now he's starving. So he wants some boar meat. All right. And the reason why you might want to do your side quests again are you, you might get some gear, you might get some silver, you might get some reputation with a local faction. Um, there's all kinds of things you can get from side quests, or if you just feel that you want to do every single quest in the game. All right. So everybody's saying go to the south. And again, all of these quests will show up on our quest log. So if we look at the map, we can then highlight where to find stuff. So the bilberry tea is there by the river. The boars are to be found pretty much anywhere to the south and east. And then the siege to the south, we just go straight to Sprigley's farm. So let's start with the bilberry tea to get that. Out. Well, no, let's actually go talk to Sprigley because we're going to run across some, some bad stuff here in a minute. So let's follow me. We're going to go south. We're going to go talk to Mr. Cal Sprigley. Now, one of the reasons why, even though we three hobbits of Orient are, as the song goes, right? Right? Isn't that how that works? I'm going to zoom out. You can actually use your, um, this... Your, your mouse button at the scroll bar, the scroll bounce, to zoom out. So if you want a wider view of what's going on around you. See, look, it's like ducklings. I'm a very spry hobbit. I can jump the fence. Now, let's take a look at our, our, our mini-map here. You notice the two red dots. Now, there used to be a quest for these guys. You see, it's a black wool spy. If you hover over him, you'll get a tooltip about who he is. Um, this will tell you the name of the mob, what kind of mob it is. He's just a normal mob. He's not an elite. He's not a signature. 
He's not a nemesis. Uh, it also tells you what kind of mob it is. This is a, you know, a man. So, for example, if we go over here and click on or hover over one of the wolves, hold still, it says that it's a beast. So, you'll see things like uh, orc kind, ancient evil, um, undead, or the dead, actually. Because there are no real undead in, in Lord of the Rings. They're undead. They're, they're the dead. So, you can attack him if you want to. Back in the day, uh, there used to be a quest. Uh, he dropped something, but he doesn't anymore. So, we're going to ignore him. But you're going to notice the red dots mean enemies on your map. So, that's one of the ways that you can tell that you're in danger or that something is close enough to you that may hurt you. So, you definitely want to avoid red dots unless you intend to kill things. Hello, welcome Mama Pots. Welcome to Lord of the Rings Online. I'm glad you found us. Uh, this is actually the very last class we're doing of Lotro 101. Uh, if you've missed our previous sessions, all seven of them, um, they are archived here on twitch.tv slash signamu. There is a collection of them uh, that I will then put on Moobot for later viewing. Um, and also, um, I am archiving them on my personal YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash C slash Druidsfire, because that's who I am, Druidsfire. All right, so we found Cal Sprigley and his farm. I will warn you now, if you hate spiders, you'll hate coming back here after the intro is done, because there's a lot of spiders. So here's Cal. He's got a couple of farm hands and a provisioner. So let's say your bags were full. You can go over here to the provisioner and sell things. You can also buy some rations, and these items, these Milk Thistle, Healing, Conweath, and Linstad drafts, drafts uh, they are good for, again, removing diseases. This one's removing uh, fear effects. This one's removing poison. Uh, and, you know, this is basically a heal. So if you don't have any of your own, like these green and these blue ones, then you can buy healing drafts from here, and, and they're useful. But if your bags are full, you can also go here and sell things if you want. I do want to save those. I want to save those. All right, you can sell all. Boom. I don't need any of the rest of that. My bags weren't full because we're so early into the game, but very helpful. <clears throat> You're doing a deep dive? Awesome. You're on Gladden? Yeah, the community on Gladden is good. Actually, one of our other mods here on the Signum U channel, Eldaleth, she is a big-time uh, um, high-end streamer over on the Gladden server, so she loves Gladden. All right. I have characters there. I just don't play them. Mm-hmm. So Cal Spragley's happy we're here. We're going to finish our quest. Our best hope is to get help from Cone. Okay, so Cal Sprigley thinks there's some bad stuff going on, but we need to get some help from Coombe. All right, Black Wolves might attack us tonight. Well, see, he fears that they're going to attack tonight, and Calder Cobb basically straight up told us that's going to happen. You might want to get out of town before tonight if you can, but can we? That's the question. All right, we'll accept our quest. And there's Will Wheatley. And everybody assumes Will Wheatley is homage to Will Wheaton. That very may very well be the case. Okay, so your dad and other farmhands gave chase to the brigands after the attack on our farm. They don't think they uh, expected you guys to be so tough. Uh, but your dad and your friends have not come back. Okay, let's go look for them and find out if they're safe. And we're going to get our first actually decent item. You notice it's got that yellow name and you notice it's got some stats on it so I personally will wind up taking the dagger when the time comes and generally what will happen is just like if you see armor the heaviest armor will get you the most gold coin if you sell it um, two-handed weapons a do more damage but B also sell for more than um, one-handed weapons it's just the nature of the system here Anyway, let's pick our quest here. So we've got a whole slew of quests here. And you notice, only one of them says intro. So all these other quests we just picked up are all 
side quests. So let's uh, let's see. We got quests all over the place. Now we were supposed to go get some help. I'm thinking we should probably go get some help first, or try to get some help. And in the meantime, since we see these little piglets all over the place, I'm thinking it's time for some bacon. So let's go get us some bacon. So cinnamon, hang out. Let's hang back here for a second. Ilwini, could if you could join us, I'd like you to attack this pig the first. Uh, us bergs are gonna stealth. Ooh, sneaky. We're, we're very sneaky. Now, Ilwini, get him, and I'll sneak up and hit him from behind. Then Ermintrude is over there with her loot, saving our bacon. <laughs> Pun intended. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so we've got one of four, and even if you didn't attack them all, but here's the thing, is your healer characters, I'm, I'm going to unstealth because it's faster. Even your healer characters don't have to attack a mob in order to get credit for killing it or to get credit for doing anything in our little group. And that's the nature of the thing, is that way you, you're not punished for playing a healer. You still will get credit for the fact that the person you healed is the one doing the attacking. All right, so we've got our boar meat. We need one more. We'll, we'll use this one. And quite frankly, we're, we're overkilling these things like really, really badly because you can so you can do this solo, but you know, it's a lot of fun to run with friends. Sometimes uh, a lot of groups, what they'll do is they'll get a, like two or three people four however many, and they'll just follow up and they'll just run over content just because they felt like it. Or, you know, they're doing deeds. Uh, the low level deeds is high level characters because they forgot to do it before. All right. So. Let's go talk to the black wolves. They, they look kind of tough, and you notice they got the, the road blocked off, so you all may need to go close enough to get it to trigger the words, the gate is locked, and they're going to taunt us. They're laughing at us. How rude. Run home, little fool. Enjoy your day. Wow. Nice. Okay, so what we have here is we could run back and give Mundo his lunch. But let's go back to Cal Sprigley instead. Because um, that seems to be the, the bigger priority right now. A hobbit's rumbling belly while being a terrible thing indeed uh, can wait over the news that uh, the bad guys are coming. Now, as you run with uh, more experienced players, they may have different methods or, you know, they already know where they're going. One thing you definitely want to do with your group, and this is one thing that always drives me bananas about running with other groups, is want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. It's like, okay, um, what do you want to do? What part of the quest are you on? Where should we go first? So more experienced players will have a pattern down of how quickly can they get through this content, but sometimes... It's really good to stand back and smell the roses, especially when you have new newer players in your group who haven't read the quest text yet five million times or who are just literally looking around at how awesome this place looks. I mean, come on, this looks beautiful, right? This may be their first time in this version of Middle Earth and they want to take a look around. So be mindful of that and give people in your group time to experience and savor the content. It's not... There's always a time and a place to rush to the end as quickly as possible, but when you're running with new players, um, it's this is not the time. So take your time, you know, give your folks their time to go through and read everything. Okay, so your guys went to Coom yesterday for delivery. This is bad news. Captain must be informed what's going on at once. Here's a note for Brackenbrook. He knows my scrawl. <laughs> He'll believe you now. Okay, so now we have Cal, a notable local farmer, is going to vouch for us. Uh, what server do I play on? We are currently on the Landreval server. I personally normally play on Landreval, Crick Hollow, or Ithil. 
But I do have characters on all of the servers. So, we still need to find the missing farmhands, including Will's dad, Walt. So let's go see if we can find him over here. And I want you to be very careful. There is a mob over here that they reintroduced to the game who might be a bit tougher. So uh, we want to focus on that one as a group. So be mindful of this, uh, this fallen tree. There is a big mob there, but we're going to avoid it for right now. We're going to head this way because you see there's a quest ring here. No, it's not the piglet. Oh, no, it's Thornton Farmhead. A far Thornton Woodley. He might be sleeping. That doesn't look like anybody's sleeping. So, if you right-click on it, you find out that, sadly, he has passed. And the game tells us, without any explanation, that he has been murdered by Blackwolves. Come on, get out of your place. There we go. All right, so we have discovered the fate of one of the three. Now, what we want to do here also, if you notice, sometimes you'll be given a, uh, a letter or something, and you can actually read it. Thankfully, we don't have to decipher Cal's sprawl. The game will actually print it out in normal text. Sometimes you have to read something like that. It'll give you hints or clues as to where to go to pick something up or to find something. Uh, sometimes it's just there for flavor text like it was this time. Okay, so let's be careful. You see this really big boar over here? This is old blood tusk. Now we want to be careful because he's tough. If you notice, he is a signature mob. His, his vital screen is this orange and red. And not only is he above our level by one, though there's four of us, so he's going to go down pretty quickly, I think. This means he's a tougher than normal mob. So if I hover over him, it says he's a signature mob. Now, the fun thing is, for many years, Old Blood Tusk wasn't in the game. They revamped the starting instances some years ago, and they took Old Blood Tusk out. But there was always a reference to the Ode to Old Blood Tusk uh, in... The Yule Festival, there's a theater that they you get to either perform in or react to people performing in a play. Um, and the play that got removed so you could be on stage was the Ode to Old Blood Tusk. So that was an homage, but this is the original. They brought it back when they uh, put in the legendary service for VIP players. So Old Blood Tusk is a toughie, but I think with four of us, we'll, we'll take him down. So... Um, Cinnamon, uh, stealth up if you would be so kind. <clears throat> did I get a cloak too? I did get a cloak. Ooh, I'm going to put my cloak on. Okay, see, this is what I tell you about, um, <clears throat> using your stuff. Okay, Ale Winnie, go get him. Our Ermintrude, uh, make sure he stays healthy if you're doing the healing thing. So, I'm going to sneak over here. Okay, we're going to try, I'm going to try to get behind him and attack from behind. There we go. Now, we actually do want to get out of the way because he will respawn. He'll come back pretty quickly. Good job, all four of you. <clears throat> all right, let's get out of the way because he does come back pretty quickly. See, he's already back. And he was kind of thinking we, we, were hung, we were food, so it's good to get out of his way. So in the meantime, I'm still in stealth because I never attacked. Hold on. But over here, we'll see a bilberry bush. Now, I'm going to show you something really cool. Uh, one option you will want, uh, let's see here. In the UI setting, you may want to select floating text is always on top. Now, I demonstrated this in a previous classes. If you don't have that turned on, then the bush, we're, we're pretty close to the bush, but some of the name Bilberry Bush would have been hidden behind these big honking reeds that Scenario loves oh so much. Um... <clears throat> And sometimes it makes it hard to find something that you're looking for. So if you say floating text always on top, you'll always see it no matter what. And I personally prefer that feature to be on. So let me hit the bilberry bush. And this is one of those cases that there are more bilberry bushes than there are actual 
need for. So there's there's plenty for all. <clears throat> we found Bill Haspear face down in the mud. Hey, Winnie, if you join us over here. Thank you. He also has been murdered by black wolves. It's the funny thing is we basically the game tells us they've been murdered and we actually don't have any direct proof. You know, this is not a court of law. If you notice things that you're supposed to select, sometimes it's hard to select them because other things are hiding or there's other things on top of them. You can almost always select something by clicking on its name or right clicking on its name. Now, by default, the game has a feature on it called Move To, a Move To Use, where if you right-click on something, I'll show you something really cool. There's a bilberry bush over there. I'm going to right-click it, even though it's out of, out of my range. Look, Ma, no hands. My character is moving to that item and trying to use it. It's one of the things that I love about Lotro that most games don't have, and I always have to readjust my stuff when I when this happens okay so we've got three of our four bilberry bushes uh, there's another one over here there's actually two you see there's one on this side of the river and there's one on that side of the river it doesn't matter which one you use they're all the same you don't have to follow me you could have gone to the other one so I've got my bunches of bilberries but we still need to find Walt Whitley now this is where we're gonna get into some danger zone You can play Kenny Loggins if you like. So you see our little arrows pointing over this away. But you see there's going to be some red between us and them. There are some black old brigands over here. Uh, and it should be worth pointing out, since we're in the middle of a body of water, you cannot swim in Lotro. There is no mechanic for swimming underwater. Um, your character can swim above the water, do a nice, you know, even, you know, swimming stroke. But you can't dive underwater. There's no... It's kind of sad, but there's no actual um, diving mechanic or breathing mechanic. Whoa, who's fighting what? A black wolf snuck up on us! Let's get him! Yeah! That's what he gets for tangling with us. Okay, sometimes you can navigate your way between various groups of bad guys by... Keeping an eye on their little red dots on the screen here. Now, one thing I will caution you about is there are some some mobs that won't attack normally, that won't show up. On, they're normally non-aggressive. Um, but if your character is too far under level for them, like they're purple to you, they may still attack you anyway. So, Elwini, if you want to attack the striker, you can go ahead. Or else, if you want to just do like this you can sneak around you notice I'm not stealth so I'm visible to everybody and I'm not close enough to her except she decided she wanted to take a chunk out of AO any so we'll take a chunk out of her there we go all right so we found Walt Wheatley Will's dad very sad he's very sad we're all gonna be very sad He also has been murdered by black wolves. You could conceivably run in here and kill some more black wolves, but we're not going to. We, we're on a mission to bring the very sad news back. Now, you could try to, you know, run back through all these bad guys or an old blood tusk, but you don't have to. You can walk up this way. Uh, and you'll see here, this is how they keep us from leaving this area. You, there's these nice bushes, but you notice you can't get past them because there's actually... A collision plate which is an invisible invisible wall that the developers put to keep you from going that way some of them you'll see a visible wall there's like a wall of rocks you can't climb up right or an actual wall of you know masonry and sometimes they will hide it cleverly with some bushes or something saying oh you can't go there like right here we've got this wall of reeds you, you can try to go through this, but you can't get out. And you can actually blame me for that, too, because that was one of the places you could sneak out. It's like along this fence over here. So we can go back to Cal. And we're going to tell him. 
Well, we're going to go back to Walt, and we're going to say, Walt, I'm sorry, but uh, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead, Dave. <clears throat> to make a Red Dwarf reference. What do you need? Oh, your poor father and the others. No, it cannot be. It cannot. He is silent. His eyes closed. He's roused. I will have my revenge! I will die trying. Archer will never fall to such murderous fiends. Okay, so you pick an item based on what's best for your class. Again, staffs can only be wielded by lore masters, so unless you want the money to sell the staff, then you'd never choose a staff unless you're a lore master. As a burglar, a lot of burglars, burglar skills don't require daggers. It's just the style fantasy of daggers are cool. So I'm going to take the honed dagger here. I'm going to finish my quest. Now, um, I don't want the O thing. I wanted this. All right. So let's rearrange our gear. I want this. This is my most powerful item. So I want to uh, remove this item. Click and drag. And I'm going to put this in my second hand because it's my second most powerful item. I'm going to put this most powerful item. Daggers are cool for hobbits. Yeah. And there's also the thing of appearances you can paste you can cosmetically equip a sword over a dagger but not a two-handed sword but daggers and hobbits are good so i've got my two daggers we're ready to go we're done here i mean cal will have some flavor text if we want to talk to him get back to archit let's get back to archit all roads lead to amber i'm sorry all roads lead to archit <clears throat> Yep, I was making Zelazny jokes because I can. Alright. We can follow the road itself, or you can cut across country. Now, in a lot of places, except Mordor, uh, sometimes Mordor, sometimes not Mordor, uh, in a lot of places, the bad guys stay away from the roads. To give you at least some measure of safety as you're traversing from point A to point B. But in a lot of places, like Mordor, uh, the mobs will roam across the road. Maybe not in as much, uh, as much frequency. And you see these two wolves standing right next to each other. This is called a spawn point. Something happened where it spawned two of them at once. <clears throat> Sometimes the game does that. So we've got our two archit recruits. Keeping an eye on the sheep. We got Calder Cobb over here. Uh, if you ever have a skill called the Fish Slap, it's one of the emotes, you can smack him in the face. And I kind of want to, but he, he'll get his own sword soon enough. You know, bad guys. It's one of the good things about Lord of the Rings. Bad guys eventually lose. But sometimes there's a long journey before they lose. So, going back to Archit. What I personally like to do is I like to turn in side quests first. That way, you know, we can then focus on moving forward via the main quest. So let's go fill Mundo's rumbling tummy or else he'll just grumble at us. So we'll give him his food. And we get a nice copper band. We get our first ring. And this copper band is... It doesn't tell me what it's going to give me. Woo! I got my first, I got a title. I also have this copper band, uh, which doesn't have any stats on it. That's unusual. The copper band used to have, like, plus one vitality or something on it. I guess it doesn't anymore. So I've got a copper band that does nothing. Okay, but I have a title. So you can uh, access your titles a couple of different ways. I can go here, I can make this active. Now here's one of the things. There are hidden, this is a hidden title. It doesn't appear until you actually acquire it. There is a series of titles that you can get for being undefeated up to level 20. Um, and if you get defeated anytime between point A and point B, you lose the option of getting that title. The title you get at level 20 is the Undying. But there's several along the way, like, you know, level five is the wary. Um, there's like the undefeated or the intimidating or whatever. Uh, there's a whole sequence of them. So you want to make sure your character doesn't get defeated until level 20. With the advent of being able to do crafting at an early stage and just stay 
crafting your entire event. You can level up through crafting. A lot of people take that route uh, to level their characters to 20 and then go actually do questing. Somebody apparently is smoking with me, but that's okay. Hey, Wood! Drop in the, the eighth note, the music community uh, Twitch emote chat there. So I'm going to be Saffronette of the Wary. There's somebody there with new phone who dis. So they're either watching the show or they're being silly. Now, if somebody saw this character on uh, Laurelin, they would probably send in a report on this character's name saying uh, this this is not lore appropriate. Um, one of the kinships I'm in, the Lonely Mountain Band, prefers that all of their characters have in-theme names. So that is something that, that's why I went and talked to one of the other senior officers, like the second in command of the, the kinship, say, hey, is Saffronet a good name? And he said, yeah, he didn't think it would be a problem. All right, we're going to make some tea for Omdir. And you notice, eventually you might come up with too many names in the same place and you can just turn the names off. So at least to clear out the clutter. And we'll... Will help feel better. I just know it. All right, we get an old ring that has a plus one might. Now the old ring with the plus one might on it is going to be useful, most useful to AL winning. Um... <clears throat> No, it's actually an eighth note. Quarter note is the one without the flag on it. But even a hobbit such as I could use plus one might just for a little bit. Uh, not so useful for uh, Ermintrude, our uh, erstwhile uh, minstrel here. All right, so we're going to accept the quest. We're going to go over to Omdir. Because Omdir's over here. And you notice his ring has the text like you know, i'm going to show you the quest ring has the lettering and it has the lettering is flaming but the entire ring itself is not flaming like captain brackenbrook's ring you notice you see his quest ring is is like all gold and like the effect this means he's got an epic quest ready to complete Omdir's quest is a standard quest ready like a side quest ready to complete so let's go talk to Omdir. He's already in use, apparently, because the game is lagging. Come on, you. There we go. Thank you, but I have not the stomach to drink this now. He doesn't feel well enough to drink it. He'll pretend. He doesn't want to hurt her. Look at that. He doesn't want to hurt the poor hobbit's feelings. Tell her. And he wants me to lie for him. Look at this. This this ranger wants me to lie to a hobbit. Lie to a fellow hobbit about, um. Wow. We're gonna lie for Omdir's sake. Yeah, he's not looking so good. So let's go back over to here to to Celandine. Did my tea perk him up? I knew it would. All right, Bilberry tea always fixes you right up. It's kind of like Verner's ginger ale for Michiganders. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true, Wood. All right. He is so brave. All right, so we've turned that quest, and now the only thing we have left is to talk to the captain. I'm going to turn my names back on. Okay. What have I done? Captain Brackenbrook is realizing he did a bad thing, so we get some pants. I'm going to take the leather pants. Got to just how wrong use the ring. All right, so we switched the pants out. All right. So you trusted Calder Cobb, and you, it was bad. So he doesn't know what to do. Like his whole world got turned upside down. <clears throat> so your son is a worthy hunter, but he's not set foot in this town for over three years. He'll never. So you you talk smack to your kid, and then your your kid left town. Gotcha. <clears throat> Okay, so let's uh, finish reading. And you can scroll down. Anytime you get the scroll bar, you can scroll it down to see the rest of the quest texts. Okay, so the hunters are the only option. Okie dokie. 
basically he's like I don't know what to do. Um, go talk to Strider. And we're like, okay, this guy actually seems... Strider seems to know what's going on. Seems to be able to do stuff. You have done well. Okay. <clears throat> we have earned his trust, something that Aragorn himself could not have done because, you know, he's a scruffy ranger. I must appeal to his son, John, against his wishes. I must leave soon. Archit will need all the help it can get. So, bring the hunters in and give the town a fighting chance. Okay. <laughs> so, we have to go get the exiled hunter. So, remember, there was a hunting lodge. <gasps> Surprise, there's a quest ring at the hunting lodge. So, we're going to go take the scenic route to the hunting lodge. All right. Shall we? This is a bit of a run. Uh, it always feels like it takes forever, especially since some classes come back here at level 45 with their class quests. But thankfully, by then you'll have your horses. Um, I don't know. I think, um... They redid some maps uh, some time ago. I think probably when they redid the uh, the old forest map. Because a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the old forest was super creepy. And there, the in-game map was very difficult to dis define. I think so, Wood. Okay, and there's a marsh fly drone. We can ignore it. You notice there's nothing in red on our map. Uh, the marsh flies used to be a aggressive, but they're not anymore. Um, over the years, they have made these starting instances easier and quicker to get through, and also made the mobs non-aggressive, a lot of them, simply because um, people were complaining, and they, they didn't want people to get a bad first impression of the game. So, over here, where all this greenery in the back, with the reeds and stuff, that all used to just be, you know, sharp rocks and whatever, and you couldn't get anywhere. And Fenton Marshall used to be further around the corner, but I'm going to go up here only because Atli Spiderbane is an awesome character. I'm actually going to bow to him because Atli Spiderbane is an awesome character. You will see him again. <clears throat> and Granger. So we want to go into this hunting lodge. And there's a hunter here, and there's a curious bedroll. There's nothing you can do with the bedroll right now, but there is something they put into the game that that bedroll becomes useful later on. So here's a bunch of hunters, Nate Whisperwood. And one of the things you always want to keep track of anybody who has a name versus, oh, this guy's name is Hunter. Uh, you can go back here and you can see gross stuff. There's some dead animals because these are hunters. So lunch and there's a dead wolf. It's not a dog. And there's, like, this little storage room back here. So they always like to fill in the gaps and put stuff around to make it look like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. But this is a hunting lodge. This is so supposed to be rustic. Um, but they still have some books, so they're not completely out of it. And we're, let's talk to John Brackenbrook. All right. And you're going to see two quests. Um, this available quest down here is a tutorial on how to use the Lodro store. I'm going to ignore it because I don't know, don't need to worry about it. And I don't want to encourage people yet to say, yes, you have to spend money. And, and you don't have to spend money to do this quest. Um, but I'm going to ignore it. We're going to go to the current quest of the intro, the Exiled Hunter. I presume you're here to bring me ill news from town. Okay, he's been watching the bounds. The skies have turned dark and foul. So he's been paying attention. So, stuff has been going on. His father has not been smart. And so now you're here to beg me for help. All right, what do you want? So we're going to get our first shoulder pads or uh, shoulder guards, pauldrons. So I've got these. I can equip them at any time. Uh, basically some more armor. Okay, so he never trusted Calder Cobb. So I'm thinking probably what's been going on here is Calder Cobb was like the adopted son sort of sort of mechanic here, for sort of dynamic, and then because 
you know, Calder Cobb was the one who was in, in his dad's favor. John Brackenberg was like, the heck with this. I'm, I'm out of here. If you're going to meow, you come on camera. That's the rule. <clears throat> oh, hey, look. It's possible we're going to get hats. And I can tell you right now, Ermintrude gets the best hat of all three of us. But pick the one that's appropriate for your class or your armor type once we complete this. So we have to defeat some brigands and gather information about the intended Black Wold raid. So yeah, John Brackenbrook is like, you know what, I was right, but I'll still come and help. All right, let's go see what we got here. He's got that other quest, but I'm actually going to ignore it because that's the, the Lotro store quest we don't need to worry about. And that bedroll is waiting. There's something cool with that bedroll. Um, every uh, starting instance, the four main ones have that bre that bedroll available. Okay, so we need to gather uh, information from the black wolves. You notice our quest text, our quest arrow points us to the south. We're gonna ignore the marsh flies. You only really need to kill them. Um, if you're on the legendary server, there's actually a quest for them, but there isn't on the regular servers anymore that I'm aware of. You just kill them and you know they die. So we're gonna ignore them because they're ignoring us. I need a kitty emoji. I have a kitty emoji. Thief Kitty has his own Twitch emote. Okay, you notice we're getting some red dots on our mini map, which means these black wolves will attack us if we get close enough. We only need to kill four of them. Feel free to kill us more of them if you like. I'm going to stealth. Whoosh. I'm going to go sneaky. I'm going to pick on this guy because he, he was in range. Uh, no, it's actually my tier 3 emote, so sadly would. I, I don't expect anybody to buy the Thief Kitty emote. However, you know what I could do? Is I could make the Thief Kitty emote a, a tier 1 emote. I could do that. Actually, I have an empty emote slot. Okay, we got two of them down. Cinnamon's going up here for the third one. Bergs for the win! Okay, so we've got three of our four done. Kick this lady in the butt. All right, I've got my four done. And sometimes you may be too far away from your party, from your fellowship, that they may be killing something and you won't get credit for it. So in here, the wolves themselves won't attack us, but the other people will. If you notice, the plans up there are glowing and sparkling. And everybody has to loot it themselves. This is one of those things where we all have to do it our own. The Black Wolves mean to attack tonight with the help of Angmar. What? Angmar. All right, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. Let's go back to John Brackenbrook. Now, generally, if, if you're slow and pokey, because sometimes you want to look around, uh, if you notice, by the way, the sky went super dark. I'm going to go back into that area. Don't follow. Kill things if you need to. But if you go into this area, sometimes you go into places like we've got the sun shining overhead. You go into a place of danger, and it'll be something like this. It's like, uh, it's doom and gloom. So that's one way to tell if you're in a place of unhappiness, because... Uh, this is, you know, Archit. It's supposed to be nice and cheerful, and this, you know, sun is shining. Or the moon is up with, you know, pleasant skies. Unless it's raining. Xerox copies left on the desk while the black holes went to lunch. That's hilarious. I'm going to show you how you can swim in the game. See, my character is swimming, 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 and swimming speed is slower than walking in most cases, and you can actually swim faster by hitting the space bar, but 
thing is, hobbits will swim before men because they're shorter. New phone who just says you'll see me on Friday on Cord Stream. Hey, Kanjal. Uh, if you want to learn how to play a warden, you can talk to Kanjal. He's pretty good at that sort of thing. Kanjal's a cool dude. All right. So we need to go back inside to talk to John Brackenbrook. And again, we're going to ignore his second quest because we don't really need to deal with it. He's going to give us a hat. You get a hat. Good work, my friend. Now, I'm going to choose the guard's helm because I can use medium armor. And it'll get me more armor than the plumed hat would. If you know, But Ermintrude is going to get the cool hat. See, look at that awesome hat. I just get this little, this little thing. Okay. These folk from Angmar sound like evil foes. At least we know what we're up against. Um, they a map that points to the old east path, which is just near here. We all avoid that path, save for Atlee Spiderbane, a visitor from the east of the Misty Mountains. From east of the Misty Mountains would be the Lonely Mountain. Or the Iron Hills, or the Great Arid Mithrin, the Grey Mountains. All right, let's go talk to Atlee. Okay. However, before we do that, we're gonna actually show you what the bedroll is for. There's this hunter with a quest. Hello, Winnie. All right, this hunter with a quest, and. This will be a solo quest that so we will have to unfellow and then we'll refellow afterwards, see? And more dangers await. You should take some rest. There's a bedroll over there. I will wake you if anything happens. This is something cool that they put into the game. It kind of points you in the right direction and tells you what's going to happen in the game. And you notice, uh, some quests will auto unfellow you. Some quests will... Uh, force you to unfellow. It's like, this is a solo fellowship. You'll see this will be, this is a solo quest. You must not be in a fellowship. It'll be big red text there, but we're going to travel now and then we'll follow up when we're done. Our mentor apparently skipped through the whole thing. That's fine, but I'm going to let it all play out because we have the time to do that today. And I want chat to see this because this is something cool. That's uh turbine back in the day put into the game. And I think it's really nice. So we're going to, you can't do this while you're in a group. Okay, I will leave the group. Actually, I'll disband it. That way I'll be the leader when I get back. So, let's do this. The bane of session play. A lot of session play is solo. Listen to my words. I am Galadriel. The Lady of the Golden Wood. Do not be afraid, young one. Your kind is known to me, but I have beheld hobbits such as you only from afar. I will not long disturb your sleep. I can visit you in dreams for only a short time. I have looked into my mirror and seen much that worries me. Let me show you. Let me just sit here. Castle of Karntum in Angmar. <gasps> I'm going to move my pointer here. Look, there's Omdir behind him. How did he get up to Angmar? Or is that somebody else? Moria! Bridge of Casa Doom! What?
Ball racks still aren't supposed to have wings. Yep, the only play, the only time in game that the bridge is in one piece. Well, no, that's not exactly true. Um, remember, you get to run across the bridge with Nafni. No, with uh, Ori. When you do that thing with the Chamber of Miserable. of sleep will soon be resting. You ask why I wanted to show you this? It is for one reason. Click, uh, why? I I'm... saw you in my mirror. Not once or twice, but often. Whether you desire it or not, your fate is tied to that of Nebula. Yeah, I would. That was there in uh, Erwin and Grima Wormtongue. Do not forget my words when you awaken. The three peoples of Middle Earth will have need of you. You must not fail them. All right. We're all back here, and then we can turn in our quest. Let me reinvite our party. And you don't get any XP for that quest. Um, you could ignore it however you like. You're talking to your son about Wormtongue or the actor Brad Dourif? Um, fun story is back when shortly, not too long after the movies came out, um, he was a guest at Dragon Con because of course he's been in a lot of sci-fi fantasy stuff and why can't I click on you? Cinnamon, cinnamon, there you are. And the basement of the Hyatt, uh, Regency... Uh, in Atlanta is pretty confusing. So I literally once um, had to give directions to Grima Wormtongue on how to find the room that he was supposed to be in for his panel. Very nice if a bit befuddled. Then again, anybody would be. Okay, so we've done our little side quest. And that was basically a movie, a quest that uh, Turbine back in the day, put into the game to kind of lead players into, you know, the whole notion that you are a true hero. You are, you're, you're the epic hero. You may not be, you know, a member of the Fellowship, but you have a fate. Uh, you're going to be an important person in this world. Okay, half the time when I get to this point, I always forget to turn left and talk to Otley. I always forget to talk to Otley. And by the way, look at him. Isn't he just... Yes. One eye Otley. He's a grumpy soul, but he's awesome. Uh, he's one of my favorite NPCs. He is old, he's lost an eye, and his name is not a lie. I'm just saying. So we're going to go deal with spiders because when Otley shows up, spiders are involved. All right, we got to fight our way through and ensure that it's still blocked at the walls of Archit. And the spiders will do some work for us against the black wolves, but they won't come before and behind with their axes and blades and follow down them. Okay. 
So let's go kill some spiders. The east road is actually to our west. Tomas is uh, lagging a little bit. Well, I'm going to try to keep all of you... Uh, we're, we're getting toward the end of our starting introduction anyway, so... <clears throat> We're going to go over here. We're going to hang our right. We're going to go over to this old uh, Arthodyne or Arnorian uh, masonry. I remember when uh, Corey has actually been through this area twice. Once before and then once after the revamp. And oh, did he have a lot to say. Okay. Once upon a time, these spiders were actually dangerous. They used to be hostile. Now they're not. And so we can all pretty much, um, with a group like this, Pick a, pick a bad guy and let's just kill as quickly as we can. That way, if I pick one and then Aelwenny picks one, we can get them done pretty quickly. So, yay, look at that! Okay, we're going to talk about class traits. We can open our traits panel. You notice we suddenly have the traits panel available in our main menu. The main menu will only show you the stuff that your character is eligible for. So if you notice, mounted combat is not here and won't be visible until I hit level 75. So our traits are now available. I can now, here's the outfit system that we were discussing, the cosmetic outfits. And so our traits panel means we can pick our specialization now at level 6. Are you guys going ahead and killing things? Are you? You are. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so you can pick which of the three traits you want for your main one. You can also pick one for your class or for your second, for your off spec. Now you notice since I'm not on my regular account, all of these have the little icon on them, which means you have to buy them in the Lotro store if you're free to play. I believe also for premium. I could log into my premium account and find out, but I, I'm too lazy. Um, look it up on the wiki. It's going to be a common refrain. Something like that. Look it up on the wiki. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to pick uh, the quiet knife. I just like... And one of the things you'll notice is these skills here are not over here. So if I pick the quiet knife as my spec, I can't use lucky strike or hedge my bet or mischievous, mischievous glee or disable. And they can't use knives out or faint attack if they choose the yellow or blue line. But I'm going to choose the quiet knife because I'm never quiet. Now, I don't have any points to spend yet, but I will get them over time. So I've picked my spec. And now if you notice, I've got a couple of extra skills down here. All right. Have you picked your specs? Also, mindless killing is cathartic. That is indeed the case. So, you all went and killed these bad guys. Well, they're not bad. They're just spiders. Uh, so, we're going to go see if the wall is still intact because we killed the four spiders we needed. And we don't have to kill the rest of them. We can if we just want the XP, but we're, we're, not, in the, we're not fussed for it right now. We're all level six, which is more than enough we need to complete our starting instance. Um, as we can see, the wall is still intact. We can right-click on our... Dak, uh, our dead black wooled scout here he's gotten all webbed up and he met his doom at the dead end of the old east path okay so we need to go back and talk to Mr. Brackenbrook so young master Brackenbrook we'll get our news and then we are just about ready to end our starting instance <sighs> I'm so excited Now, one of the things that will happen is when you complete your starting instance and you get teleported to where you end up. Actually, I want to go this way. Um, again, we three hobbits of Orientar. Okay. <clears throat> no filking on the stream, Druidspire. We will wind up in the Shire in Mickle Delving. Aelwine, our erstwhile man guardian, will wind up in Archit. And he'll continue on there. And one of the things that he will discover as he goes out to this area, it'll basically be this will be what he will see when he gets in. 
But one thing he will notice is as he goes roaming around these areas, some of these wolves and marsh flies and whatnot that we've been killing will also be aggressive, the same as the black wolves always were. So you got to be careful. Don't assume the wolves aren't going to attack you. What about a TARDIS? What's a TARDIS? I think this uh, this Hunter's Lodge is a TARDIS. It's pretty larger on the inside than it is on the outside. Okay. A slender hope. A dead end will surely work so we're going to pick a die, any die. I'm going to go... Normally I have navy dies in the navy um i think i'll go with gray we are gray we stand between the candle and the star okay so dead end at the stockade works in our favor i see everybody's picking different colored dies so i'm going to pick something different so we all got different colored dies okay he's going to go to arch it and now he wants us to continue our quest Okay. Now this is the end of the starting instance. So we're going to accept this quest. And we get the, the uh, tutorial. We have just received the final quest in the introduction. And it warns you, if you have any other quest underway that you want to do, do them now before you do this quest. And if you right click and you choose the thing, it's going to give you the quest text here. And don't forget to check your quest log. If you're not sure, you can go back here and see what else you have. Okay? So if you miss something, like let's say you forgot to give Mundo uh, his stuff. Or maybe you did the quest but forgot to turn it in. This is the chance the game to warn you that you can't go back from here. That... Do it now, get your XP, get out of there, and then go come back here and complete the quest. So, I'm going to travel now. And it's going to warn me I can't do this in a group. So we're going to break our fellowship. Very sad. And everybody, play through the, the next series of quests on your own. You can do all of this without getting killed. Um... Aowenny's going to have the easiest time in terms of, you know, being survivable because he's a guardian. Um, more experienced players are pretty used to playing their classes. They'll, they'll tool through pretty well. So, I wish you all the best of luck to get through it. Don't die, because otherwise you will lose your undying thing. So, I'll see you on the other side. Well, actually, I'll see the hobbits on the other side. Aowenny, you will wind up and arch it afterwards. So sit tight there. Don't go anywhere. Thief, you be a quiet cat. Meanwhile, we'll all play through the same version of this quest. We'll just wind up in a different place afterwards. John Brackenbrook and his hunters have reached the outskirts of Arctic to find it already ablaze. A desperate struggle to save their village is about to begin. Hopefully, you will all right. <clears throat> I don't think they'll ever change it back to fellowship because you don't really need to be in a fellowship to complete this. Wow. All right. We have no time to lose. Alrighty, the town. It is possible to fail this quest if you let Brook Brackenbrook die. Um, or if you yourself get killed by the bad guys, so. And as a burglar, you're supposed to be able to, um, stealth. There's not a lot of option to stealth before, because a lot of burglar skills require, you know, some of them require you to be stealth, but, um, a lot of the bad guys aggro pretty quickly. Oh no, it's Ned Pruner. There's Ned's wife. I'm just close by to escape the slaughter of the badger. We have to help him defend the badger. The badger, of course, being the mad badger, that uh, nice pub that we saw last time. Oh no, he's dead. 
Jet must still be saved. All right, so Archit's on fire. Everything's burning. All right. And a lot of times as you're doing these quests, you'll you you get the pause and kind of take stock and let's let's say you need to quickly, you know, heal up real quick or, you know, eat some food before you get up, go into battle. Um and a place like this is a good place to pause. Let's say the doorbell rings or something. Okay. And sometimes you can let the people with you actually draw the aggro and you just sit back and fight the ones that you need to fight. If you notice, the ones I'm attacking have this round, uh, you know, thing going on here. This is the one I'm attacking. Now this is the one I'm attacking. Now before, you'll just see, like, you know, a round circle of something I've selected, but if I'm actively attacking, it turns into that red thing. Hey, Phyllis School, how you doing? We must find my father before it's too late. All right, the marketplace is safe. We're going to fight along Brackenbrook. And sometimes what will happen is when you click on the NPC to advance the quest, you see where we are? This is where all the vendors were. And we came over by the jail, and this is the backside of the, the Mad Badger, right? Atlee has survived. So sometimes it'll leave you selected on, you know, your NPC, your friendly NPC, but you actually need to uh, unclick them and click on the guy you need to attack. Now sometimes you're attacking things and, ooh, yeah, I got a crit. I got a crit. I got to use my crit skill. Uh, sometimes all of your stuff is on cooldown, but your character will still attack because of this thing right here. This is your auto attack mode. But you can only, you know, turn that on when you're attacking somebody. The mad burns, I still hold out you can also right click on a bad guy and it will auto attack if you're close enough. And even if you're like a ranged character, you can right click on a bad guy and if you're close enough, it will still do like a basic, you know, ranged attack like, you know, shooting an arrow at somebody. But it won't do much damage, but it'll be enough to get their attention. Hunters will do that. Champions will do that, too. That's how I pull on my champions, right-click and kill them. <clears throat> okay. Protected the market square in the crafter's area. The Mad Badger burns. My father will be alive, but I hold little hope. Okay, follow Atlee and you. Okay. Now we're here to protect the young hunter, John Brackenbrook. Okay, it's the hobbits. I knew you would survive. His dad and Omdir. At one point, you're going to get held while the story plays out. So I'm going to find a good spot here. I'm going to zoom out so you can see it all. For those of you who play on the official Lotro channel or watch the official streamers like myself and the others, some of us have the official uh, Twitch alerts set up. I don't because I, I personally find them annoying. And that's one of the Twitch alerts they have set up so that when somebody follows the channel, it automatically... Uh, it'll say that or a uh, randomly generated message. is like, they approach, defend us! Now, one thing is, let's say there's a multiple group of bad guys you want to fight. No more time for games. We come for the okay, now, if you notice, I'm actually pressing the buttons to try to move my character. Right? My character is... is She's not under a dread effect, but because the game requires it, she's hold she's holding while the drama is unfolding here. That happens once in a while where it's just for story effect, because otherwise I'd attack these Kargul. Now, Kargul is like Nazgul light. They are completely game created. 
lesser variants of Nazgul. So they're not ring wraiths. They don't have rings of power or anything, at least not major ones. But they're basically intended to be like Nazgul light. And they've just, uh... Oh no! Captain Brackenbrook is down! Calder Cobb, we gotta attack him. Now, you notice he's got the signature name on him. So he is tougher, but he's still a wuss compared to me. I'm a brave and bold burglar for now. So I've defeated Calder Cobb, but he brought some friends. And Otley and John Brackenbrook took care of him. Okay. So at this point, when I right-click on John, it's gonna play a loud video because they need to adjust the volume of the loud videos in the game. The only streamer that I know that has managed the loud video thing is Sapiens, the former community manager of Lotro. He runs his game through an equalizer because he cheats. Snorblum! How you doing, Snorblum? They're very loud. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm actually going to cheat. And I'm going to turn the game audio most of the way down. And hopefully you'll hear it. You'll hear the cat too. See? Alright, let's get you and the others safely to the Shire. So we're going to wind up in the Shire. Uh, Aelwene will wind up back here in Archit. He will wind up in an Archit that won't be on fire, but the buildings will look remarkably the same. So he'll be in burned Archit. And it's been a long-standing joke amongst players of the game that it's been 13 years and Archit is still in a state of disrepair. With the Blackwall's grip on Archit broken, the Hobbits hurry home to the Shire, eager to return to their simple, peaceful lives. But not all is as peaceful as it seems. Troubles stir at the bounds, and a shadow of fear is left in the wake of the Nazgul. So hobbits get a different movie than anybody else does. Otzel's camp in Thornley's workplace. So Tomas wound up in regular Archit. And you can see the beginnings. You know, look how beautiful the Shire is. You've got hobbit holes built into the hills. Um, and it's sunny out because it just happened to be daytime. It's afternoon in the Shire. Um, so we are here. Tomas, our friend, is, uh, is in burnt Archit. And we have completed our starting instance. Now, the four of you who have been running with us, I have your names written down. Uh, if you would like to join the Mythgard Kinship, so you can continue your adventures in the in the grouping of the Mythgard kin. Uh, I will be more than happy to switch over to my free-to-play or my regular account. Actually, you know what I can do? I'll just log in. Because I can run two instances of the game at once. Because this is not my regular account. Oh, we're on Langeval, Ginger. So... My, my game is going to lag here for a minute. Well, you're going to hear the other instance of the game as it's loading up. You'll hear it, but you won't see it. Because XSplit will hear it. But uh, I don't have the game. There we go. Swoosh. I'll log in as Kiriana, who's hanging out at the Court of Celeborn. Why am I hanging out in the Court of Celeborn with that character? I forget. Okay. Before you can be invited to the kinship, let me go down here. You want to actually talk to Mundo and complete the intro. You need this novice ability. It's a characteristic. It's a passive ability. And you're going to finish now. I've got my first milestone skill, which looks like this for everybody. Until you then put it someplace else. I have just gotten new mail. Since this character is free to play, I can't just open the mail anywhere. I have to actually go to a mailbox, like a peon. 
<laughs> All right, so again, a milestone skill will let you basically go home. And I've earned my first points of reputation with the men of Bree in this case. And as you increase reputation with the various factions, you can get stuff from them. So I am now become a novice, but I want to go check my mail. Here's a milestone. I can set my mile by default. The milestone for a hobbit is right here. Um, but if I want to check the mail, there's a mailbox right here. And let me turn my game volume back up. There we go. Here's a mailbox. You right click the mailbox. And mailboxes can be used to send letters to and items to other players. Uh, that's also if you use the auction house to buy and sell stuff from other people. Um, this is where you get the uh, stuff. Like you buy something off the auction house, this is where you get it. Um, the game will also send you mail at various times for certain quests. Um, so I'm going to detach that item. Some mail, if you detach an item that the game sends you, the mail auto deletes itself. But if it's something a player sent you, um, you have to manually delete the mail, even if it's just items they sent. So that concludes our starting adventures. So um, let me again get logged into Kiriana. She is hanging out in. Uh, Yeah, she's hanging out in the, the, the uh, Allegiance Hall for elves. So, let me load this up. And I'm going to send you all a kinship advice. You can agree or disagree as you prefer. And you'll see a thing pop up on your window saying... Kiriana is inviting you to her kinship, Mythgard. And by default, you will be a recruit for a certain period of time. And after that period of time, which I personally don't know that period of time, I don't really have a huge role in the Mythgard kinship. I'm not one of the policy makers or policy awareers. I just invite people when they ask for invites, pretty much. So all three of you are now in the Mythgard kinship. Um, you can always, as you can see, if you hit O and then click on the kinship tab, you can see, um, you know, there's a link to our Discord channel. There is our Twitch TV channel that we're on right now twitch.tv slash signamu. You can see the names, levels, classes, and ranks of other people currently online in the kinship. You can also, um, let me, uh, let me actually invite uh, Safranetta for just a second so you can see what I'm talking about. She's going to leave the kin uh, later this evening because I'm going to recycle the character because I want to put her on my main account so she can join the LMB. <clears throat> anyway, let's invite Safranetta. And now you can see on Safranetta's window the invitation from Kiriana. So I will accept it, mainly because I want you to see the kinship screen. And this is, you hit O for the social panel, and it gives you the tooltip about it. And one of the cool things is, because we, as a kin, have a kinship house, you now have a skill to go visit the kinship house. Now, our kinship house is in Thorin's Gate, in the Thorin's Hall house, homesteads. It's really nice, actually. Um, for my personal kinship, uh, it's I have one uh, in the Belfalus Gondorian housing instance. It's one of the premium houses that I spend a ton of stupid of money. <clears throat> And I'm going to say something. All right. Oops, I hit a button. All right. So we've already have somebody else already in the kinship by the name of Botho. 
who is offering their assistance and, you know, help and whatnot. If you notice, our character names changed colors. The light cyan blue is your kinship. Like, if you run across somebody who's in the same kinship as you, their name will show up like this. All right. So, you're all in the kin. And now everybody on the chat can see the kinship stuff. Hey, Zargareth, how you doing, my friend? Can I send Carrie on a kin invite, please? You can help out at some time? Absolutely. I, I love the name, though. Um, Carrie on with a C is the name of... The name of Professor Corey's uh, war steed on Grifflet. All right. Tomas has to go, unfortunately. Well, that's okay. We're just about out of time anyhow. We've gotten through the starting instance, as I hoped. Uh, if anybody has any questions in chat, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, if you have any questions later on, if you're watching this asynchronously, uh, feel free to drop in on our Discord and drop the question in the Lotro 101 uh, channel. Uh, you can also ask general questions. Um, for those of you who are in the Signum U Discord and are a Mythgard kin member in game, if you are not in the Mythgard kin role in Discord, let me know and I can fix that for you. In fact, now I can go and find some people and let's see if I can get these folks situated here. <laughs> see if they're actually in Discord. And, of course, I'm looking for, um, you know, similar names. So, Dragon Rider. I don't see you in this one. Or you might already be set to be such. Um, or if you want, if you're in our Discord, you can send me a private message. Or just leave a note in the Lotro 101 channel that, hey, I just joined. I'm such and such a person. And I'll get you situated. Let's see if I can find Ginger at least. Because I know Jinjar uses the same name. Some people aren't logged in. But that's okay. You don't have to be logged into Discord right now. I will find you. And that way you can join us uh, for Shannon. Because there is a locked Lotro channel in the Discord. Um, I'm actually going to rename it. Because I, I know some people have gotten confused about what that actually means. Uh, it's not about Lotro in general. Um, I'm going to call it the Lotro Mythgard Kinship. There we go. Snorblom sent me a whisper, so I need to find Snorblom. And so, if in Discord you are in, you have the right role, roll, roll, rolling down the hole, um, for the kinship, your name should be in yellow, unless you have a higher rank that gives you a different color of name. Anyway, we are all done for today. So there are other officers. Um, one of the other things you can do, and I would highly recommend this if you want to, is... Oh! Okay, Starblom. You're, you already have the role. So you should see a... Um, you should see a... Lotro Mythgard Kinship channel. I just renamed it to that. That way people know what that's for. Um, cause a lot of people who were in the kinship who could see that channel, um, didn't realize it was only for kinnies. I'm like, uh, yeah, that doesn't work right. So anyway, let's go back to our kinship panel. I'm going to cover these characters up and you can see, uh, the name of who all is here today. We don't have enough people to generate additional pages. What normally happens is if there's more people on, then you can use these arrows to cycle between the list of names cause they only do them so many at a time. You can also make this a little bit bigger if you wanted to. Uh, you can leave yourself a note. 
Like, you can say, I'm a Kiriana alt, or whoever, I'm Druidsfire, or whatever. Um, some kins, uh, and the way you access those notes is you go up here to where it says location, because you can sort by this, you can sort by class, you can sort by level, you can sort by member name, this is alphabetical. You can sort solely by rank, which is generally the way the game does it. You can show online only, or you can show everybody in the kinship. Look at all of these people. We have 26 pages of people in our kinship because we're an awesome kinship. We have a bunch of officers. I'm the only one currently on. Uh, some of them uh, may be alts of other people. So, for example, you notice Binks, Dime. I mean, these are some of our usual people. Uh, Cryel, with this icon, is our leader. Um, this is uh, the person who took over for Maven. And Maven is in here somewhere. There's Fair Venon, who's an awesome person. Um, I've met her. In, she was at Mythmoot last year, I do believe. Um, let's see who else we have. Here's our very own Wigand, Professor Cory. It's actually really funny. There's Narnian, his, his uh, Exploring Lord of the Rings character. Here's a Maven alt. Valori, who is normally uh, the person who runs with Cory during Exploring Lord of the Rings. So we have a whole bunch of officers and none of them are on and some of them, and it'll tell you how long it's been since they've been online. <clears throat> and then it goes by, you know, it goes from leader, officer, um, kinsman or kinswoman, and then eventually to the new folks, the recruits. Um, once you become a kinsman or a kinswoman, you can have access to certain additional things. It's really cool. So <clears throat> the other thing is to access the notes, you click on this location thing. And then it can change it to player note. So Kiriana says Druid Stealth Healer. This character um, is the alt of this other person. This is Jared. I don't know who Jared is. Book Specs apparently can't get the link to work. I don't know what link we're talking about. So that's pretty cool. Uh, is the kinship on Signum U Discord? Yes. And it would be this Discord. I'll link it in chat. Discord. So if you're not in our Discord, you can click on that link and join our Discord. Anybody is welcome. Uh, generally, this is a more scholarly sort of Discord than you may uh, be used to amongst gamers. So there's not a lot of gaming talk per se. It's more, hey, I saw this link about Tolkien. I think people would be interested in it. Um, we did run a tabletop adventure through the Discord uh, led by um, Richard Rowland. It's called Hall of Fire. Some of you may see a, the, some uh, some folks with orange names. That's the Hall of Fire crew. Uh, we haven't uh, done a second session this year, this past year, and I have heard no news about a new one, but we'll find out. Um, your name is still white in Discord. Uh, Jared is... <laughs> Snort blow my what you did there. Uh, so your name is still white, Dragon Rider. Let me see. Come on, Discord. Yes, Dragon Rider, there you are. Let me Let me change your role. I'm going to give you the Elotro kin member role, and you may need to refresh, but you should now be yellow like everybody else in the kin. All right. And my tummy is saying it's, it's supper time, so I'm thinking I'm going to go do supper. However, we have been through the, the character creation process. We've gone through many of the systems of the game. I'm still not decided one way or the other if I want to have a Lotro 102 session where we do more of a deep dive in certain of these systems. I mean, kinships are pretty straightforward, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering maybe glossed over some stuff that we might need to do some more stuff about, uh, do some more lectures. So I haven't decided, but at this point, it feels like a natural jumping off point where um, you can continue your adventure in middle earth and as you see there are other people in the kinship who are more than happy to help you can ask them questions and generally you can ask them in our discord folks are eager to help uh, again asking during signum classes really doesn't help all that much like if you go to the girls of middle earth thing and you ask a newbie question they're generally pretty helpful they'll try to assist but they may be in the middle of something professor Corey is focused on his lecture or whatever piece of architecture he's looking at 
Um, so he's not a good person to ask for help on learning how to play the game. Um, come ask me. Uh, come ask anybody on the official Lotro channel. Uh, we'll go back to slides. We actually, I still have slide. Well, I don't have a, well, technically I do, but I don't, right? Helpful links. Um, you can answer your questions on the Lotro forums. Your mileage may vary. People have opinions, sometimes very strong opinions, and sometimes they're not very polite. There's no sense of common respect that we have in the Signum universe. So you can ask, but you may not like the answer. Uh, you can always go to help.standingstone games, especially if you encounter a game bug, or if you want to look at their help files, they're fairly generic. Um, <clears throat> You can also ask anybody on twitch.tv slash stream. Most of the streamers there encourage people to ask questions. Um, and especially maybe you want to, your German might be your first language. You might want to ask one of our German speakers because there are a few German speakers on our Twitch channel. We even have a lady uh, named Stina who is actually a really good resource for Lotra. She plays high-end characters, but she's a very nice lady from Norway. Uh, and Chromite is a frequent guest on her streams when she plays Lotro. So it's always a good spot to catch Chromite if you want to ask him some questions. But he's generally more advanced if you are if you know how to play, but you want to really get into the whole min-maxing or theory crafting thing. So he's really good for that. But again, I'm not volunteering these people. I'm just saying these are folks you might want to you know watch their stuff and see if maybe they will be helpful. Um, but anybody generally in the Lotro stream Twitch chat, if you ask them a nice question or a newbie question, they won't turn you away. They won't treat you like, oh my God, you're such a noob. Learn how to play. Get good, man. None of, we don't tolerate that sort of shenanigans. I mean, there's a little bit of t teasing your friends. Like I do like to tease Cordovan a bit, the community manager. Um, but it's, it's all in good fun in that regard. But... When it comes to actual new folks, we like to help out. We want you to join our community. We want you to stay in our community. So it, it makes no sense to drive the new, the fresh blood out. You can also, uh, I highly recommend going to Fibro Jedi site, the, the category of his Lotro Beginner's Guns, because they will be a lot of good guides for, let's say you want to learn how to do crafting, or you want to learn how to do festivals. Fibro Jedi is an amazing resource for any new player, and he's he's a really awesome dude in the UK. Uh, there's a if you want to do some you know self learning on your own, you want to read a lot. Lotro-wiki.com is be your best friend. I frequently will check the wiki on certain quests because I forget where to find stuff, or I want to complete a deed and I just don't want to go wander around the landscape. I want to actually hurry up and get done so I can move on to the next thing. Jinjar knows fishing. Big Ed Mustafa knows fishing. He knows task management, uh, task items. He knows um, inventory management. Inventory management is a running gag for Lotro streamers and Lotro players because we have so much stuff. We're hoarders. <clears throat> We're totally hoarders. Sagarath knows WASD. Good job. Somebody knows everything. Somebody knows something. So we have an awesome community, and I am... It, it's not hyperbole at all to say that Lotro does have one of the best gaming communities out there. And that's mainly because of how, you know, Standing Stone wants us to be. And the fact that the official stream channel, we kind of made a choice to discourage gamer behavior and encourage a community standpoint. So um, the community really is... <laughs> an unofficial unpaid volunteer marketing division of of the Lotro uh, marketing party even though Lotro has awesome marketing people in Tolero aka Amanda Grow uh, and Johnny Liu aka SSG Red Panda there's a couple other people but they're the ones who interact with us the most and they're awesome awesome people uh, I love to bring them cannoli every year when they let me come visit the office so um if you have any final questions, throw them in chat. Uh, I'll be around for a couple more minutes, but it's it's supper time here in my part of the world. So I got to go eat some food. Or actually, I'm going to throw it in the instant pot and then whatever. Otherwise, drop them in the Lotro 101 uh, Discord channel in the Signal uh, University Discord. Or hit me up. You can send me a whisper on Discord or a whisper in Twitch, though I recommend Discord as slightly more reliable. Um... 
I generally don't log in my Mythgard alts a lot, but if you are watching this asynchronously later and want an alt to be invited to either the Landraval or Honor server version of the Kinship, just drop me a note in Discord and I'll log in if I'm not in the middle of 5 million things and get you fixed up. No biggie. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here week after week or watching asynchronously later on. Uh, as always, I will get this video uploaded to my personal YouTube channel later. But here in short order, uh, I will have it locked in here on the Signum U Twitch channel uh, permanently uh, until somebody else decides to delete it, which won't happen. But yes, uh, what's the first thing you should save Lotro points for? Um, only if you already had the point for Journeyman Riding because it's on sale this week. Otherwise, I'd wait for the next sale for that. Uh, the currency cap is one thing on a free-to-play account. The second thing is the premium wallet. Those are two of the really important things. Wallet first, gold cap second. Because as a free-to-play account, you can only have so much gold. So, welcome to our party. And we are glad to have you. And I hope to see you around in-game. Um, if you see somebody on one of the servers running around with a kin name of Radio Free Gallifrey, upwards of 90%, 95% of the time it's going to be me, because that's my personal kinship, and I only have people in it, uh, I have one other person in it on Ithil, which is Sapiens, because I run on his Lotro show Thursday nights, um... Or if you're on Landreval or Krikal, it's either going to be me or it's going to be one of a very small circle of friends. However, I think I might open up the Landreval, the Landreval version of the kinship to other people. But first of all, I'd highly recommend hanging out with our Mythgard kinnies first because they are amazing people and they can help you uh, ask some questions. Uh, and, you know, they're fellow Signum people. So they're, they're us, right? So thank you again for uh, being here, either live or asynchronously. Thank you for watching later on. Um, and again, if you have any ideas or suggestions of, you know, a Lotro 101 or a 201, uh, let me know. We, we might be able to do something like that. And uh, uh, everybody, have a great day. And as always, you know, if the rambunctious Riolu can have a tagline, I get a tagline too. And mine is, you know, if you can't be good, be good at it. Thank you, and have a, have, have a happy and safe day, and hope that you and your loved ones are well.